yeah, you sound great. Like, how long did that yeah, one last? Isn't it weird, though? Like, you already had COVID, and you get it again, and that's, this one rocked you more than anything, huh? Yeah, the first time it wasn't bad at all. I didn't feel it hardly, you know, just maybe just a, a couple of days of sniffles, and this time uh, got me pretty good. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm feeling almost back to normal, so good. Uh, I'm thankful for that, yeah. Well, good to hear that. Hey, we today's uh, – national bucket list day and i know you've traveled all over the place and stuff like that i know you're a busy guy now and i know you're probably your main objective is to watch the kids and do stuff with the kids but is there something that you'd like to do just maybe you and the wife maybe the kids involved what's on your bucket list um i would like to go over uh to um jerusalem someday and uh and see some of the old sites uh, where Jesus walked, and some of the some of the cool uh, sites from the Bible. That's probably one thing that at some point I'd like to do. Um, that's on my bucket list. Yeah, man, that's uh, that's a long trip, but I get that. Even going anywhere yeah, over I there, I, I don't I don't love to travel. Like I don't love long travel, so that's what holds me up. Like spending a whole day on a plane. Oh God. It doesn't sound all that appealing. So that's probably the biggest holdup on a lot of my bucket list uh, places that I'd like to go. Speaking of travel, Cardinals in uh, San Francisco, for your career, did you have favorite road cities, cities you loved, whether it was maybe you had friends or restaurants, uh, anything like that? Um, Yeah, I think for me, like, you know, the most of the time, it's either a restaurant or at the field. So you're either one or the other. You're you're not really – out or at least me uh out experiencing the city so there's some good restaurants in san francisco we went to a a couple places i really liked but i I think philadelphia like a lot of the places that i love and remember fondly are the places that i i hit really well or saw the ball really well or played really well in so um i always hit really well in philadelphia so i always loved going there um yeah I, i think to me it's more about the ballpark atmosphere and environment that, that really got me excited about. I love to go to Boston and um, New York and, and uh, in some of the, the places where, uh, you know, just some of the environments and, and, you know, the, the a Wrigley field game in the, in the middle of the summer, not necessarily early when it's cold, but like a middle of the summer, one o'clock game Cubs Cardinals when it's 80 degrees. Yeah. And, uh, you know, th- those are the kind of things that, that were my favorite parts about sort of traveling. Uh, but, yeah, there's there's always there's always uh, good restaurant spots that we'd hit up if we got in on an off day or we had a day game and we got a chance to go out to eat. We'd find somewhere really good to eat. And, and uh, you know, in these big cities, there's, there's always good places to go. Speaking of places you remember fondly, Oakland, California. You were, of course, in, in Oakland, A. I ask you this, uh, half kidding. but And, and here in St. Louis – Look, we went through this. We lost our our football team. It wasn't fun. Mm-hmm. But it looks now like uh, you got a plot of land in Vegas, and uh, they're looking at land, and you're going to potentially have a, a downtown Vegas stadium, and it looks like the A's are moving from Oakland to uh, to Vegas. What do you think of that whole situation? Well, it, it just, you know, it's one of those things. It's, it's, it's lasted so long where, you know, they're trying, they, you know, they had a resolution in Oakland, and they were going to, build it here, build it there. They're going to try to move it to East Bay. They're going to try to move it to closer to San Jose. You know, it just, the Giants own all this, you know, you know, sort of territory where they, they can't move to. And so the, the long saga of it and, and just the, you know, sort of people trying to figure out whether they, they can stay in Oakland and, and, and build a new ballpark or, you know, they're going to have to move somewhere. And I think just a resolution more than anything for the organization so that they can, uh, move forward but um, you know it's it's tough because I, I really like the people there uh, I think they're smart I think they they uh, I enjoyed my uh, experience with the, with the people there it's, it was just a really a, a difficult park to play and it's it's a tough um, you know it's old and it's it's uh, you know it's it's made for I think made more for football um, and and so I think you know what whether they you know it, it is tough you know I think when you think about the Oakland days I mean they have a rich history when you're talking about you know going back to when Tony was there and and uh, you know when you got Ricky Henderson and you know the Bash brothers and you know when I was a kid that that was that was one of the premier organizations in baseball and uh, to think that they're they're on the move is is somewhat surprising but I, I guess you know when you look back at the last ten years or so and and uh, you know trying to figure out 
you know, there's I, again, there's tons of politics and how all that works. I'm, I'm it's way over my head. Um, but I do think it'll be it'll be good for the organization to have a resolution of, of uh, having a new ballpark. If, if that's in, in Vegas, I'd be interesting uh, to see. I'm always interested to see how how, uh, you know, baseball either, you know, thrives in, in new cities. And, and so it'll be a, it'll be an interesting, uh, I guess, next couple of years. So, Matt, the uh, Cardinals lose two of three to the Mariners. They uh, drop the first two. They prevent the sweep. Jack Flaherty pitches well yesterday. Nine strikeouts. And again, it's it's still early, but this team just seems like uh, it's it's not getting going, getting on a run. Maybe that happens here against the uh, the Giants in this four game series. But were you able to watch much? And uh, what do you think? Um, I missed. I, we were at a conference this weekend, so I missed. I missed. I didn't get to see. I, I saw mostly just highlights. But um, it is exciting that um, Jack is is showing flashes of of, uh, of the dominant pitcher that he was a couple of years ago, and so I think that that's encouraging. Um, you know, I think, you know, Jordan Montgomery needs to pitch well tonight. I think he needs to, he needs to be that sort of two slash, you know, two or three caliber pitcher that, that gives you, you know, consistently six innings and, and two or three runs that you can count on. Um, so yeah, I, I think that when you, when you get consistent starting pitching, uh, I think the offense is going to, is going to come along. Uh, it was cool to see, uh, Paul DeYoung, uh, do what he did yesterday, um, and so, um, yeah, I, I think it's, I, I think you, you get Wayno back on the team and, and while he may not be the, the ace pitcher, uh, that he, he has been, uh, you know, as far as just pure stuff, I think having him around and having him back on the team, uh, back pitching every fifth day, I think it gives a boost to the club. And so I'm looking forward to, to seeing, uh, Adam back in the rotation and, and being around the team and, and, uh, Giving them the lift that he can give them, uh, and then, you know, I, I think that they're they're uh, they'll be they'll be fine. I think they'll they'll, they'll go on a run. I, I think that they'll play well and and uh, get back into where they want to be. Matt, I want to hear your thoughts on uh, Nolan Gorman's early success in his young <laughs> career. Uh, similar to you coming up, you you pre- you adjusted to the big leagues uh, pretty quickly. Uh, is it a mental adaption, a mechanic adjustment, or is it just you know? What what all is it? Is a combination of everything? Yeah, I think it's both of those. I mean, I, I think he did make uh, you know a couple mechanical adjustments that are allowing him to be more successful, more consistent, um, covering pitches uh, that that maybe you know the, the the other teams were were able to just kind of go to this this same sort of area against him and and him having a hard time you know handling that pitch. So I think he's covered up some holes. Um, with some mechanical adjustments, which is awesome, which is something that you have to do. And um, he has incredible talent. I mean, there's no one that's ever said that this kid's not incredibly talented. He was drafted in the first round. Um, you know, everyone evaluated him, said he had, you know, 80 raw power and and uh, and just, you know, ascended to the major leagues very, very quickly. And so there is an adjustment period. And, and uh, you know, I don't, I don't know him well, um, but I'll, all accounts, seems like a great kid wants to learn, wants to work, um, wants to improve. Um, and so I, I'm excited for him. I, I think that it's always fun when you see this kind of adjustment and, and, and get him getting the results with the with the swing changes that he made. And um, there is some, you know, uh, mental adjustment from year one to two. And <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> um, so I, I think he's he's uh, he's showing uh, the aptitude, uh, that, that, that what makes a, a, a really, really good hitter for a long time. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for him, excited for the organization that it seems like he's, uh, he's going to be a, a pillar. And, uh, Matt, you mentioned Paul DeYoung. We're all rooting for Paul DeYoung. First game back three for four hits a home run. He's only, uh, 29. He's going to turn 30 here this season, but when you watch him, anything you can find of, of basically what happened the last couple of years and, I just looked up too and saw Matt Carpenter had a nice game, and I know when he kind of found his swing that off season, he went and hit with you. And I think both those guys, there was just kind of a two or three year span where just nothing went right offensively. And I hope Paul DeYoung can get back somewhere, you know, twenty seventeen to twenty nineteen, Paul DeYoung. But do you do you know why that happens sometimes with guys where it just seems like man, just they kind of fall off the table production wise? Yeah, I mean, I, I look. I mean, I, there, it's it's one of those deals where it, it can be a, a, a confidence head thing, but it also 
a lot of it is, is mechanics. And if your mechanics are, are out of whack in the major leagues and, and the, at the, you know, as, as hard as guys are throwing and as nasty as this stuff is, and, and, and you only get two at bats off the starter and then you're facing, you know, a, a full go reliever in your third at bat and then possibly the closer set up man, your fourth at bat, it's difficult. And when your mechanics get off, uh, you sort of can get, get sort of in this downward spiral in a hurry to where, um, you're just fighting uh, uphill all the time. You feel like you're o oh, two every every count, and um, so I, I think it, it it for me mostly it's a mechanical issue that gets off, which causes your confidence obviously because you're not getting any results because your mechanics aren't good, um, and your timing maybe you're, you're not getting ready on time, and, and it, it could be a lot of different things. But um, if you don't have an efficient swing, uh, particularly these days with with the, like I said the velocity. Uh, you can get you can you can get in trouble in a hurry, and then, like I said, the, the confidence goes, and then and then all of a sudden you're questioning uh, everything you're doing every day is is uh, you're you're searching uh, for for something for a fix, and and so um, I know at least with Matt, I, I haven't watched uh, Paul as much, and and haven't really you know kind of dove into what he's doing just because, you know, Matt and I were so close and he asked me to do it and he wanted to come hit with me and, and, and really, really wanted my opinion. And um, so just kind of looking at his mechanics and how they had gotten off of track. Uh, and then once he kind of felt, uh, you know, the, the bad habit that he had gotten into when we first started, you know, he, he couldn't feel it, you know, just sort of this early front hip and, and, uh, and the way he was, he was starting his swing. Uh, had a really hard time uh, feeling this bad habit that it had kind of gotten in there. Uh, but once he kind of felt the old feeling, uh, he was, it was almost like a light bulb came back on where he's like, Oh yeah, that's, that's, that's how that feels. And, 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 you know, obviously to get to the level that, that Matt and Paul have gotten to at one point, they had really good mechanics and, and had that feeling of confidence and knowing exactly how their body should move. And, and so, uh, if you can get them back into that space, uh, you know, the production, uh, particularly, you know, you're talking about how young Paul is. I mean, you know, Carp's, Carp's getting up there, but, you know, he all of a sudden his swing decisions were, were right back to elite level last year. And, and, uh, and, and uh, you know, the ball's coming off his bat again uh, really well. And people had sort of thought he'd lost his bat speed, but a lot of it was just he was in a really bad position mechanically. So, Matt, what was the, the worst slump of your career? Just looking at your numbers here. I mean, you're pretty dang consistent where even if you had any type of slump, it didn't linger and turn into actually a, a bad season. Did you have, though, a, a bad stretch of a month or so? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I have to go back and, and think about it. But, yeah, I mean, you look, it's really hard. And I think that, you know, hitting a baseball and, and, the, and trying to have this sort of uh, confidence when you're, you know, you, you know when, you, when, you, when you're three for ten and everybody thinks you're awesome – you still made seven outs and, and, and you still made, you know, probably some of those were with runners in scoring position and, and you, and you question what you're doing. And, um, it, it, it can be a, a, a bear mentally, you know, as far as, you know, trying to hold your confidence, uh, when there's this much failure. And I think that that's, um, the mentally, you know, tough part of baseball and being tough and being able to compete and put your mechanics aside in the game. And, 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 you know, there's, there's, there's a competitive element um, that that you have to have, but yeah, I mean, I had a lot of a lot of slumps and a lot of you know times where I went up to the to the batter's box and I thought, my goodness, I think I've got my last hit, you know, rest of my career. I think it's, I think I, I, I've already had it, so I may never get another one. Uh, so um, it uh, it can it can crush your soul in a hurry, uh, you know, in in in, uh, in baseball, but um, it's uh, it's it's one of those things where. Um, you know, you just got to keep grinding and, and trust the guys around you and and, uh, and uh, keep playing. Matt, how about Jackson Holiday? 13 games Whoa. at Delmarva, 392 Whoa. average, walking, 523 OBP. Yeah, baby. Couple bombs, driving and runs. Wow, that's a that's a crazy hot start. Yeah, he's off to a good start. Uh, he's doing well and and. Uh, you know, I'm happy for him, and and I uh, got a chance to go watch a few games, and uh, he's doing really well. So uh, he's he's having fun, and and uh, you know he's he's probably going to go up, I would say, to high A pretty soon, and, and uh, so he uh, 
he, he's he's off to like I said, he's off to a good start. He's playing well. Um, I enjoy enjoy watching it, um, and uh, and happy for him. Well, we're all rooting awesome. for him, man. Uh, and I'm glad that uh, you're feeling better. Appreciate you coming on. Enjoy the week, and we'll talk ne- uh, next Monday, big dog. Yeah, Jim. Jim, take the take the week off. Or well, yeah. It was, it's West Coast, probably too early. Or what yeah. was his excuse? He, do, he doesn't work hard. You know how he is, man. He's just uh, no. he's probably sleeping right now, taking a nap because that's usually what he does yeah. in the afternoon. All right. Well, the show's better without him. You're so right. It's all good. Yeah, You're right. See, we feel the same way. I know. Isn't I know. That funny it's, how that works. Like no one's that. interrupting each other. Everybody's happy. Crazy how that yeah. is. <laughs> hey, man. We'll talk soon. All Enjoy right. yourself, buddy. Okay. See you, dude. See you, guys. See you, Matt. Maddie Holiday, right there. Good stuff there, man. I did not. Uh, the coolest guy going. I had not Googled Jackson's numbers until just now. Kidding I know it's super early, but geez, oh, Pete's crushing the baseball. I'm like, Maddie, you ever going to talk to him about girls? <laughs> Because they are going to be all over that kid. <laughs> I think he's he he knows how to handle stuff. But uh, man, oh man, the kid's a stud. Just just be careful with it. It's all they're going to be all over you. No big deal. No big deal. Just know how to handle it. That's no big no big deal. Jackson Holiday. Good God Almighty. So he's doing pretty well down there. You say doing awesome, crushing it. So is that, what is think... that? Is that double A? What is it? No, no. That's so. That's just A ball. A ball? As as Matt said, he thinks he's going to be bumped up to uh, double... to high A. T- what's high A? Triple A? No, no. So you got A ball, you got advanced A, okay. double A, triple A. Okay. So he's only, do. I mean, he was just drafted the last year. So what is he, 19 years old? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a lot of stuff going on, man. Good for him. He's probably like, you know what, I'm glad I get to watch my kid grow up and play and maybe not be involved. Oh, maybe he's yeah. like, I'm glad I get to chill, watch Jackson, watch my other kids, and not be in San Francisco right now freezing my ass off being a bench coach. You can do that. I mean, how old's Matt Holliday? I think he's 40, maybe two or 40? three. Yeah. He can do that in eight years. I know. He can do whatever the hell he wants. Whenever they're all up and they're playing and doing their thing. But right now, it's like, no way. No way. Hockey was great this weekend, but two Anton Carters, a really bad goodwill version of Biz with Soy McHugh, was awful. They've really missed talk at Gretzky and no Biss in that. Yeah, dude, I saw that. They had... Who'd they have on the the panel? The Colby Armstrong, who I like. Then you had Anson Carter. You have Liam McHugh. And then they had, oh boy, from uh, Philly that, uh, God, what the hell is his name that didn't get hurt for like 100 or 800 games? What the hell is his name? Yandel? Yandel. Keith Yandel, who I don't think is that great. I know everybody thinks he's funny. He wasn't great on our podcast by any stretch of imagination. I think he was bored. So that kind of goes in a different direction with me evaluating him. But on him on the panel, I don't think he's that good either. Did you uh, not ask him provocative questions? We asked him everything. I just think he was just like, I don't know. He didn't give us it's his all. Fault. And I always remember that. Me, all right? I always remember that. Because I'd give you my all. I go on your podcast. I bring the heat every damn time. Every time. Do you give your all every day on this show? Yeah. I think you do. I do. In my, every day. Be, every day. I give it 100%. I think that's, am I great every day? No. Do I miss things unorganized? Yeah. Do I know everything about WNBA? No. But I give it my all. How many days are you great? Out of out of every five on average, how many days would you say you're great? Great, good, just being damn good. Like when I laugh and we're, I'm, when I'm listening, have a couple cocktails in me, and I'm laughing at what we're doing four times a week. Four times good? Yep. That's pretty good. It's pretty good, dude. So we have we're one, pretty good. One we bad have one, show on average per week. We have, an off, we have an off day. I think that's fair. That's fair. No, I'm, I'm dead serious. I think that's, what a, do good, you guys that's think? a good bar, though. If four of your shows out of five pretty damn good are good, it's usually that Thursday show or something where kind of we're just kind of don't have much going on, and we're just kind of uh, actually those sometimes are the best shows. Sometimes on a Monday when we have too much things to talk about, that's when the show's not as good. It's really weird. I'm not gonna lie. I to listen you. to everything dude. today. I could never wake up. I don't know if I took right? decaf. I just I had my coffee first thing in the morning, and it just never hit me. Yeah, I need to double up. You need double up, dude. You need an espresso. I'm telling you. Drinking coffee, like you just have one hit of that espresso, babe. You're like, bam. Like, let's go. Like, whoa. And then you're not, your teeth aren't stained as much. You're not sipping coffee all damn day. Just one, bam. Get up and get going. I'm telling you. Wake me up I like that song. Save me. Jackie boy, what picture is that? Is that you and your girl? Did you propose? Is that you with the long hair? And is that your beautiful girl that you just proposed to on a beach? That looks like uh, William Nylander. 
Jackson. Oh, that's ja- oh, he's married. He's he's getting married already, eh? That's Jackson Holiday. Yeah, had a kid. Yeah, he's engaged. Yeah, how about that? Good for you. Hey, do you think Matt? I, I wanted to ask. What'd you want to ask? That was a good question. question. Thank you. Uh, I, he's got to analyze my softball swing. But, oh. I, but I wanted to run that past him, but I didn't know if. Oh, yeah, he'll do it for sure. I figured he would just do it if we told him next week. Well, that would, that, hey, we're going to send you this don't, video. Don't let him know. Don't tell him that you got spanked 15 in one inning. No, like, that wasn't to, part of the plan. I was going to say, you're going to have to beef up a little bit. We've already talked about this, so. But he's cool. analyzing me individually, right? Not, yes. the, not my team. Oh, so here's okay. the deal, so by that, the way. That helps a little. This will be good. He won't care. So yeah. get your video Wednesday, right? Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. So get... oh, wait, we're on a bye week. Oh. So actually, a bye week. He yeah, we, we need. Oh, we need. Week. We don't. Six <laughs> six days of rest isn't enough. We need thirteen. He had a bye week. In softball. But that, no, actually, that works out. I can ask him on Monday. Okay. Next week. That's cool. He'll do it for sure. Hundred percent. Get do it. get two three plate appearances. <laughs> I didn't... And then we'll ask him. I'll put a video together where we'll we'll put Matt's voice and him talking about your swing with your swings. We'll slow mo it. We'll make it look cool. <laughs> I thought about asking, but he was breaking down his son's swing, who yeah. plays in a single A professional ball, and I didn't want to be like, "Hey, can you analyze my beer league softball swing?" No, he will. I didn't want to like. No, he hundred. I didn't want to well. dumb it down. What do you? Um, who are you talking to today? What do you got going on high noon there, Nate? Uh, Bill McDermott go through uh, City's draw one one. Get I, I I feel you on these ties. I'm not a big fan of stupid. ties. It's like uh, stupid. I used to coach with a guy one time who said, a tie's like kiss, kissing your sister. You're right. You know, what the Don't hell is that? Don't kiss your sister. It's terrible. Terrible thing. Uh, Kyle Gerdeman, who's the uh, head men's basketball coach at Lindenwood, will give us an update. Oh, nice. And also Howard Balzer. NFL draft starts this Thursday in Kansas City. A lot of things going on, baby. And how about the Pittsburgh Pirates in first place? Woo! All alone in first place. What's their payroll? $40 million? No, we looked up about 74 I okay. think. Okay. Ish. They bumped it up a little bit. They spent some money on Key Brian Hayes. Funny how that works. You spend a little bit of money, now you're in first place. Weird how that works. But they're doing this without their uh, their shortstop. O'Neal? Who, yeah. O'Neal Cruz, who busted his knee or, or leg sliding into home plate on a freak play. Remember that? He looked like Tyler O'Neill when he slid in the other day. Like goofy, awkward, unathletic. Tyler O'Neill needs to start hitting home runs. Boom. Let him know. What's he doing? How about that catch? That was a nice catch. Nice catch. That was a nice catch. Very nice catch. That was a nice catch. He said a lot to the warning track. That was a nice catch. I think he's got to beef up. He's got to beef up. You're right. How beautiful is that That's my 170-pound input. That was awesome. Seattle Stadium is badass. Looks bitching, dude. Yeah. Cold. Cold. But it looked cool as hell.